So welcome back. So we now move towards the more derivation regarding canonical partition function. So in today's lecture what we will see is we will see the canonical partition function and its thermodynamic properties. So in short what we will discuss is we will discuss the properties of ideal monoatomic gas and then one of the important aspect which we have still not arrived at is the equivalence of this thermal reservoir which is beta. So we have been talking about beta but we do not know what is beta. So we will try to relate it with some thermodynamic property and then we will see what are the relationship between various thermodynamic properties with respect to a monoatomic gas. So we consider a canonical ensemble. So just I want to repeat what is canonical ensemble? It is a system with walls that are rigid. So there will be no volume change. So you imagine, so you imagine there is some enclosure which does not have any provision for change in the volume. So walls are rigid and the walls are also thermally conductive and within the wall they have fixed number of particles and all this entire enclosure is in contact with a thermal reservoir of temperature T. So in this case this N, V and T are fixed. Now the question we have to ask is how do you evaluate the partition function if I am having a non-interacting particles or monoatomic atoms in a box. If now if you have within that box number of monoatomic gases and how do you evaluate the partition function. Just to recall what we have studied so far in the previous lecture, we have studied that for the similar atoms where it is indistinguishable the following expression holds true where Q is a single particle or single atom partition function raised to the power of number of particles. And we also know that for a single particle function Q it is nothing but all the states of the system for a single atom system then multiply with the exponential factor which is beta into their individual energies which I can also write in terms of energy levels. So if I write in terms of energy levels the index I becomes J. So we will write here E to the power of minus beta into Ej. J is here the energy levels, J is the energy levels of single molecule atom whatever of single molecule. So this you should remember this is for states and the right hand side is for energy levels. So looking up this definition we move ahead. So as before let us write the expression where the allowed particle energy states are from quantum mechanics. So we have done this definition in the previous lecture just want to recollect that. So you know this energy states are the function of this translational quantum number Lx, Ly, Lz these can be only integers. So that expression is equal to h square 8 into m mass of the particle v to the power of 2 by 3 then what you do is you multiply them with their square of the. Now if you see this expression it means the energies are function of the volume. So the partition functions are also function of volume and the number of particles because if you change volume you will change the energy levels. So it means it is a function of the volume. Then how do you evaluate the partition function of this non-interacting or monoatomic atoms in a box? So what you do is Q, so it means I have to sum this all up Lx, Ly, Lz then e to the power of minus beta h square by Lz square just writing this expression basically h square 8 mv 2 by 3 this Lx square plus Ly square plus Lz square I am writing this only not doing nothing else divided by 8 mv 2 by 3. So e to the power of this expression. What is this meaning? Meaning means see how many ways you can arrange this Lx, Ly, Lz. So there may be many such values of Lx, Ly, Lz because they are positive integers. 
and if you can write out all those possible configuration then the partition function for a single molecule is then will be the summation and summation means not on Lx it will be on Lx, Ly, Lz separately. On this particular expression which is the energy of a particle in a box. So now we have got the expression. So if this is an expression I can also separate out these different expressions. So it means I can separate out it means I can write down because this Lx will be only it will operate only on the vector Lx square. So I will write Lx square here and the remaining 8 m v 2 by 3 is as it is okay. Same way I can also separate out the translational vector Ly and I write out the terms of Ly here. So it will be e to the power of minus beta h square Ly square 8 m v to the power of 2 by 3. Then finally I also have the terms corresponding to Lz vector it is e to the power of minus beta h square Lz square by 8 m v to the power of 2 by 3. So it means I have now separate out. So separate out means you can see is Lx square plus Ly square plus Lz square. I just separate out in their exponential terms and then you have three separate summation. So I can fairly write down as the quartile function in the x direction into the partition function in the y direction and partition function in the z. So it means this overall partition function q is the product of the translational mode corresponding to the translational integer Lx, Ly, Lz qx, qy, qz. But still even though the expression looks very simple but the summation is not that simple. It is a sum and how will you sum this up? No, not that easy. So what we do? Our aim is to can we replace this sum and with an integral and for that if you want to replace a sum and individual sum and with integral we have to see this term which is raised to the power of e has to be a continuous in nature. Let us see if we can do that. So consider this below sum. So the sum which I have just now seen let us consider the first term let us this is Lx. Let us suppose Lx goes from 0 to infinity and we consider the term e to the power of minus delta into Lx square. Okay. So what is delta? This delta I have written as into it is a constant so I write here beta h square upon 8 m v power of 2 by 3. Okay. So if you see the mass of an atom is usually in the order of 10 to the power of minus 22 grams and if we assume the total volume of the box as 1 liter so v will be in the order of 100 centimeter square. So now what will be the order of delta let us see. So the order of delta if you see if I write down h square by m v 2 by 3 okay. and h you know h is the order of 10 to the power of minus 27 if we are writing in terms of arcs per second. I write in terms of arc per second because it is 10 to the power of minus 27. Okay. So you square that so it becomes 10 to the power of minus 54 and m is 10 to the power of 2. So if you minus 54 and in below you have close to an order of 21 because if it is multiplied by 100 it becomes 10 to the power of minus 21. So minus 21 goes up and it becomes minus 54 and 21 it becomes to the order of 10 to the power of minus 33 okay. because this h is as you know it is in the form of 6.62 into 10 to the power of minus 27 arcs per second. So arc goes with grams and with centimeter. So you multiply their orders I have multiplied their orders h this will be minus 54 and this will be minus 21 so it becomes minus 33. So this is the order. So it means if this beta so if I can write down this expression Lx if it is e to the power of minus beta into h square Lx square zero to infinity. So because we know Lx is goes from zero to infinity, zero to infinity 
e to the power of minus beta into h square x square by 8 m v to the power of 2 by 3 into dx. So, when can I write this? When can I write this as an integral? When this particular expression that is Lx delta. So, delta if you see this delta is multiplied with delta into, so if I say delta into this term h square by m v 2 by 3. We know the order this as 10 to the power of minus 33. Now, this is delta. So, this delta is actually nothing but we is, there is no beta here. The, if I multiply by beta, so if beta is less or equal to 10 to the power of 16, so that 10 to the power of 16 multiplies by 10 to the power of minus 33, the overall exponential terms becomes the order of 10 to the power of minus 17. Then this particular expression, if I take the expression from Lx, let us say 10 to the power of 7 to Lx, let us say 10 to the power of 7 plus 1 does not differ by much. The sum n does not differ if we go from 10 to the power of 7 to 10 to the power of 7 plus 1, provided this beta is less than equal to 10 to the power of 16. So, I have taken the maximum value 10 to the power of 16, then it becomes 10 to the power of 17, because 10 to the power of 16 gets product or multiply with 10 to the power of minus 33 that becomes 10 to the power of minus 17. So, if you do that 10 to the power of 17 as an order of the exponential term and you let us say you change the variable from Lx 10 to the power of 7 to Lx 10 to the power of 7 plus 1 successive value then the sum n does not change. The sum n in fact changed to the order of 10 to the power of minus 7. So, it means we are ok. So, we can replace the sum end with an integral. So, that is what I have written. I have replaced the sum end 0 to infinity with an integral 0 to infinity by putting in a variable x. Okay? So, this is a very important simplification because without this we cannot possibly move ahead and do the exact canonical partition function. So, it means what we have now I can write out the single particle function q I have q is equal to then we come back 2 pi m v 2 by 3 by h square into beta to the power of whole cubed. So, this I can simplify it, I can write there as 2 m pi by h square beta to the power of 3 by 2 into v. Okay. So, because this is, I have just taken out this volume square, because we have got this expression. So, now I am writing out the and simplifying the expression q. So, with this we can now write the assembly of atoms. Now, we have written here single atom. Now, if you take care of n number of atoms, it will be simply be equal to q to the power of n by n factorial okay. or it will be become 2 pi m. So, this will be raised to the power of 3 n by 2 and this will also be in raised to the power of n by n factorial. This is the expression for the assembly of atoms. Now, take the log both sides. If you take the log both sides, what you will get is 3 n by 2 ln into 2 pi m by h s square beta plus n ln v minus ln n factorial. Okay. So, now let us see what do we have an expression for the internal energy. So, we know internal energy from our previous lecture is nothing but the partial derivative of the total partition function with respect to beta keeping the volume and the number of particles constant. So, this is that expression. So, if you do this expression, you see all these terms will cancel because n, v, n factor all are constant. So, what you are left with this factor. So, this factor if you do the mathematics carefully, that will cancel out by the numerator and denominator. So, what we will be left with simply 3 n by 2 beta. So, you see for a internal energy 
for a monoatomic gas which are having n number of identical atoms is nothing but 3 by 2 into n by beta. But for a monoatomic gas what do we know what is the total energy of n number of atoms from classical thermodynamics for a monoatomic gas if you recollect it will be nothing but 3 by 2 n k t okay. This we know it is 3 by 2 n k t for n number of identical atoms or a monoatomic gas. So, this shall be then exactly equal to 3 by 2 what we got n by beta. So, both are similar. So, if from there what we can say is that 3 by 2 cancels out. So, what you have is simply equal to beta then is equal to 1 by k t. So, now we have finally arrived at an expression of beta. So, the expression of beta is nothing by 1 upon k t. So, we already told that thermal reservoir, one thermal reservoir the only thermodynamic property which comes into this effect is the temperature. So, it is inversely proportional to the temperature. Okay. So, now we can write down the single particle function in this manner q. So, if I write in terms of states j, so it will be e to the power of minus e j by k t. Essentially, I am not writing in terms of beta. Now, in terms of beta, I am writing 1 by k t. Okay. This is the expression. So, this expression is equal to we know e to the power of minus e j by k t. This sometimes is also called as the Boltzmann factor. So, the expression as below here is the Boltzmann factor. So, now we took two important assumptions. First is we replace the cement with the integral. Is that replacement or is that assumption correct? Let us see. Because we know we took this expression. So, let us write down again the expression what we got. Beta we got as equal to 1 by k t and this is the expression we, we needed to evaluate. Okay. And uh, we know delta is equal to beta h square 8 upon m into v by 2 by 3. So, if you see this expression in here temperature will range from 0 to infinity. So, 0 to infinity even if the temperature is rising. So, beta infinity means so as temperature is higher and higher. So, obviously, beta value so, as I we told you that beta is should be less than equal to 10 to the power of 16. So, obviously, as you have higher and higher temperature, this factor is all automatically be valid because you will get lower and lower beta. As temperature rises, beta will fall down. So, but only catches if the temperature goes towards 0, close to 0. When it goes to close to 0, that beta may be higher, may be higher than 10 to the power of 16. So, except at low temperatures less than 1 Kelvin let us say we are talking about which is the where the beta takes a very enormous or more than this value beta will be if it is not less than 1 Kelvin then the beta will always be less than 10 to the power of 16. So, it means our replacement of the summation with an integration is valid because as I told you this other things are of the order of 10 to the power of minus 27. Okay. So, so, we told that beta should be less than equal to 10 to the 16 which is true except for at temperatures less than 0. So, first assumption is correct. Let us see the second assumption. What was the second assumption? What we said was that all the energy levels are continuous in nature. It means they are closely spaced. So, let us see is it closely spaced? So, we talked about this particular assumption. The number of molecular energy states is very much greater than number of molecules. So, it means when a molecule is provided the energy states, so the number of energy states it has access to is much much more than how number of molecules it has. So, it has freedom of choosing many energy states where it want to enter. So, it means outcome of this is two molecules cannot be in the same energy state, two molecules cannot be in the same energy state. So, in the previous lecture we said there was a factor where I wrote 2000 0, 0, 0, and then what we did to make the assumption simplified we actually said that that to neglect that value. So, it actually is true because two of the molecules cannot have one molecular energy state because the accessible states is much much higher. 
For example, if you consider 1 liter of gas at a standard temperature and pressure, it will come around 10 to the power of 22 molecules. So, it means if I wish to put all these values into this expression, this can be roughly be chosen as the difference between two energy levels. So, m can be of the 1 liter means volume is 10 to the power of 22, mass 10 to the power of 22 and h is 10 to the power of minus 27 square of that. If you take this, this is entire term becomes the term because we are multiplying beta with this term. So, beta with this term means this term will have an unit of energy. So, this can be assumed as the energy level as the indication of energy level. So, this particular term is roughly of the order of 10 to the power of minus 33 orgs. So, if you see this order of energy is so, so small that we can say the number of possible accessible energy states is pretty large as compared to number of molecules. Because such is the difference between two energy levels, it means it can have access to any of the energy levels plus in addition each energy level has a very large degeneracy. So, it can have access to a separate energy level as well as energy states also within that level. So, it has a whole range of choice where it can end up having occupying a single energy state. Now, let us see the concluding this part relationship with thermodynamic function. What is that? Because we have already said that U is equal to dou ln q by dou beta at constant volume and number of particles or I can write down now I know the value of beta is equal to 1 by kT. I should always write down the partial derivative in terms of temperature. So, writing beta as 1 by kT and simplifying this expression what we get is we get kT square by dou ln q by dou t upon V by n. Okay. We have got this expression or u I can write down as kT square by q so what i did was ln q i am writing as dou q by 1 by q so dou q by 1 by q q comes outside so you have dou partial derivative of partial function with respect to temperature so this expressions you should now remember for the internal energy because we will be frequently using it in our subsequent lectures so now another way i can write down the q for a fixed number of particles n let us suppose I have a partition function where I have fixed the number of particles and I write it in terms of temperature and volume. So, that expression will be let us suppose I write ln q assume as a function. So, I can write ln q as a function of temperature and volume. How will we write that? We know that I am writing a total derivative in terms of partial derivative. So, it will be like this dou ln q by dou t volume and number of particles into dt plus you have dou ln q by dv again respect to dv. So, let us multiply the previous expression by kt square on both sides. If you do that, you will get kt square d ln q equal to kt square dou ln q by dou t upon v by n plus k t square dou ln q by dou v keeping n and t constant. I just nothing I have done, I have just multiplied k t square on both sides from the previous expression. Now, see this expression, the first expression, if you recollect this is nothing but u into dt, u into dt because do this expression is an outcome of the definition of internal energy which I just wrote now in the previous, I will just write it down once again. Let me first complete this expression kt square dou ln q by dou v so this comes out to the fact as you can write it down because i have already written u is equal to kt square from the previous slide it is given still i am writing it here so 
So from this expression you see u is equal to kt square dou ln q by dou t. So dou ln q by dou t is already there. So I am putting here kt square is there. So what you have is only u into dt. So u into dt you have. So it is converted to u dt. Now u dt can also be refined in this manner. For example, let us assume, let us assume this expression. I want to make it simplify it because we do not know what is the derivative of this ln q by dou v, but I want to simplify it to something useful or can I have something relationship with respect to classical thermodynamics. For that let us assume this expression, let us suppose I do a derivative on u by t for example. So what is this u by t? If I do a derivative on u by t, it will be nothing but minus u by t square into dt plus 1 by t into du. Okay? I am writing this expression. So now multiply t square on both sides. So if I multiply t square on both sides on this term, you get minus u dt plus t du. Okay? Now if you see, I can write down from this expression, expression for u dt. What is this u dt? u dt is equal to this term. This term means if I take this term here, so everything comes this side, it will have a minus sign. So it will be minus t square d of u by t plus t d u. So let us suppose this is equation 2 and let us suppose this was equation 1. So what you do is you substitute the value of this u dt, substitute the value of u dt in expression 1. So from 1 we get, so u dt, so u dt, I am just writing it in different manner. What I will do is from first expression, I will take this entire term to this right hand side. So I have a term of u dt, u dt is nothing but kt square d ln q and then I take this one, it will be negative minus minus kt square dou ln q by dou v n by t into dv. Now I have done nothing from 1, I have just rearranged this expression u dt. Now I will replace this u dt from expression 2. So expression 2 I will write down here, maybe I go to the next slide. So if I write down from the next slide, write down the expression of u dt here, it is minus t square d of u by t, okay, minus t square d of u by t plus t into du. So this is u dt, expression for u dt, then the terms as it is, kt square d ln q, then you have minus kt square, then dou of ln q by dou v, then you have this n and t and dv. Okay. So this is u dt from the previous expression. Now what you do is try to write t du in this side and take this term to the right hand side. So if you take the right hand side and club with this expression. So I uh, will write here t square d of u by t plus kt square d of ln q minus kt square Okay. Now what you do is you divide by t, you divide by t because I want to keep the extended expression u. So you divide by t, so it will become d u by t plus kt d ln q minus k into t because I am dividing with 1 t both the sides. Okay. This is fine. Now what we will do is that du, du, what I will do, so I will take kt as common and take the total derivative as common. So what do I have in inside? So since I have taken uh, k into t inside, k is not there, so I will have a term which is equal to u by kt, u by kt, okay, u by kt inside plus. 
since I have taken kt outside as common, the total derivative is already inside, it will be simply be ln of q, u by kt plus ln of q. Then this will be as it is kt dou ln q by dou v n by t into dv. So, I have taken the total differential inside this bracket, I have taken kt inside, so it will be u by kt. Let us suppose this equation 3, let us dearrange this term. I can write this also as kt into d, kt into d ln q. Now, I can write this u by q as t into dou ln q by dou t because this comes from the definition of internal energy because if I recollect, I am again writing it down, this u is equal to u equals to this kt square by into dou ln q by dou t into v by n. This expression u by kt, u by kt I am writing as u by kt is equal to t into this expression, t into this expression. Then the remaining expression is same as before. Okay. Now, we are in a position, we can now write down and compare because from our classical thermodynamics, you know this expression, u is equal to t ds minus p dv. So, this is well known expression, we have read it in your undergraduate studies. Okay. So, internal energy change is equal to temperature times entropy change minus pressure times volume change. If you see this expression exactly resembles of this. So, if you take up this expression 4 and expression 5 and compare the like terms, we will get expression for entropy and pressure then becomes this term. So, pressure and entropy we have come out with an expression. So, let us compare it. So, we have what? If you compare those two expressions, we will be having pressure as kt dou ln q by dou v t by n. So, we have a pressure term here and we also have an entropy term. So, ds from the previous expression ds, if I relate the like terms, it will be k into d of ln q plus t into okay now in order to get an absolute value what you do you do a integral on both sides so you will get k into ln q plus t into dou ln q by dou t vn plus some constant c so, this is the expression of entropy. What we have done, we have from the first and second law of thermodynamics, we did compare this term u is equal to T ds minus P dv and we compared with this term that is u equals to du equals to this T ds minus P dv, we compared to this term that is du equals to T n v then minus k t dou ln q into dv. So, if you see this expressions entropy and pressure are obtained through expressions let us say this is 6 and let us say this is 7. So, equation 6 and 7 relates the pressure and entropy from the classical thermodynamics. So, what we have done, we have started with the assembly of atoms and then what we have derived the expression for the entropy and pressure in terms of partition function. So, I want to see, seek what this constant C is, that can be obtained if you know the third law of thermodynamics which says that at temperature equal to 0, absolute entropy is 0. So, it means at that point C is equal to 0 as well. So, S then becomes 
nothing but dou of ln q plus t of dou ln q by dou t into v by n. So, this becomes the expressions for entropy, overall entropy. So, if you know the partition function, you can find entropy. If you know the partition function, you can find pressure. So, these two terms you should remember and this is one important outcome for the derivation of the thermodynamic property. So, we also come to the conclusion of this lecture. In this lecture, what we have seen, we are able to derive both entropy as well as pressure in terms of partition function and the partition function we are now able to express in terms of the thermal reservoir which we found that is the equivalence of the temperature with the thermal reservoir. So, now everything measurable can be accounted for the temperature we can measure, the volume we can measure, mass we can measure, we know and the number of particles we can know. So, with this we can uh, actually calculate the partition function for a monoatomic system. So, I come to the conclusion of this lecture. So, again uh, you go through this Sandler's book, it have the definition for both the entropy and the pressure and this definition is well you also know from your classical thermodynamics and we have then related to the Gibbsian equation and equated both the pressure and entropy. So, thank you. Mm -hmm.